Uh, so I started like I started uh, I started tattooing from home when I was 16. I, I got my first kit, uh, like you know those fuck, the the suitcases, the super right. bad ones. Was it the Huck Spalding kit? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It was. I had like a dragon machine and some other coil um, and a bunch of like the little very scary pigments um, <laughs> and you know the whole thing. And I just yeah, I bought it at a bar because um, in Denmark you can go to bars when you're 16. Uh -huh. So I got it there, and the same night at a house party, I just I just started tattooing. I <laughs> that a, same night. That same night, yeah. <laughs> first, didn't didn't bother with practicing on an orange or anything. <laughs> no, no, I got my first one when I was 14. So I and then the second one when I was 16. So I kind of had like an idea about it, and I was obviously I was very into it. So I watched you know all the YouTube videos, which was like two or something right. at that time, and then. Uh, yeah, I just 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 went for it. I haven't stopped since. Wow. Yeah, I did some horrible shit like that night, but you know, <laughs> it was yeah. We're still friends, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. it's a good memory for yeah. them and you. <laughs> yeah. Shit's about to go down. I'm feeling something in my spirit. Chats and Taps with Aaron Della Vadova. Hello friends, lovers of tattoo, and I especially mean that for this episode, if you are a lover of tattoos, and I think a lot of people who watch this show are, I think you'll really like this episode. The, the gentleman I have on today, I learned of his work hmm, two, three years ago maybe, he came out here from Denmark to do a guest spot with us over here at Guru Tattoo, and uh, I of course went to his Instagram, and I got to see him work here for a couple weeks, and I was mind blown. The guy is insane, especially in a specific genre of tattooing that I've made a career out of, which is, I, I just call it large format execution, the types of tattoos that are meant to decorate the whole human form, not so much a piece that goes on your forearm or a piece that goes on your chest, more of a let's take it from the neck bone to the ankle bone type stuff. And in that particular world, he is a master, a true master, a beast, a legend in his own right. His work's insane. So, with all that being said, please welcome my guest today, Mads Till. Welcome. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I feel like I'm going in a boxing ring or something now. Like, all, <laughs> all da -da -da. Up. Bruce Buffer over here. <laughs> Actually, and just so you know, if you want to check it out right now while you're listening to the show, it's at Mads Till. M-A-D-S-T-H-I-L-L. -L. Flick your phone open while I'm talking and just look at this man's work. It'll blow your mind. So, yeah, man. I meant every word I said. You're a huge. You've become an inspiration to me. Like Thanks, dude. Working around you and watching you, how you do it has been inspiring for me. You know, I think large format tattooing is its own separate category of tattooing. It requires things that regular little jammers don't require. The idea of where, how do you, how, you know, what flows down an arm and wraps around an elbow and then goes onto the wrist, and can that really be on the collarbone or should it go down more onto the belly? You know, all these composition decisions that large format tattooers make is uh it's its own special little unique niche and i think you're very very good at it thanks dude yeah thanks um I, yeah there's 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 definitely there's a big element to going from like smaller format and then graduating into like you, you start doing single pieces then you get like a back piece one day and then you take it down a little bit on the butt cheeks and the next thing you know you're going all the way down to the like to the to the kneecaps or something like that. Yep. And then I don't know. It just it just comes naturally. It does. It does. Yeah. And obviously, it's what turns you on. I mean, you wouldn't be doing that type of tattooing if you didn't probably hold it above all others. I mean, I still, on a personal level, just think that's the ultimate tier of tattooing. That's like as far because it's as far as you can take it. I mean, there is nothing further than decorating the whole body, especially if it's one movement, like yeah. one piece, which is a. You know, you don't have a full body suit. I don't have a full body suit. I don't think either of us were planned out enough to have figured no, that out early no. on. No, I wish I did, man. I, I wish I, I had a whole body suit. I wish I did, too. Not many tattooers make it through that gauntlet because we're in tattoo shops and our friends are hanging around and yeah, we end up we get getting Dumb things. shit all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true. I have people look at me, they hear I'm a famous tattoo guy, and they immediately look at my arms, and I have to tell them, stop. Really? Just <laughs> stop. Yeah, yeah, right. They're like... Is that, I don't know why they do that. They're like, they look at your arms as if you did them. I'm like, this is 25 years ago stuff. Like, yeah. go to my Instagram. That's what I do. Yeah. Oh, I got funny. I got this apprentice now, Casper. He's uh, He started out as my client. He had like his chest on already and he had like one sleeve, but he started getting laser right off the, off the start when, when we started working on him. And he's like, the whole, the whole body now is done by me. 
and he he started getting into tattooing as well like while finishing his whole bodysuit so he'll be one of those guys who has like a nice bodysuit and does tattoos at the same time yeah that, that's the new breed yeah fuck that guy yeah fuck those guys <laughs> there's a lot of them though Not the younger crew of tattooers that are they're coming up now they're they're wisening up yeah and they're yeah. saving their bodies yeah it's and smart it is it's smart. i know that wasn't my, our era i mean you've been tat i've been tattooing for 30 years believe it or not you've been tattooing for 16 years so that's still you're you i put you in the, the new generation you know from yeah, my me old too. ass you know me too but you're like the beginning of the new generation and now there's a whole nother group of talented I, people coming in yeah i got i got in i got a biker shop in copenhagen when i was i think i was 17 at that point and we did needles like in the basement and like made them ourselves did like everything old school didn't do stencil like everything was painted on with ink uh, and then tattooed later on wow. and just like i think facebook was out at that time but nobody really used it for tattooing yet mm. and like Instagram, my space at that point i have no idea dude yeah. I, I was just i was like fresh off the first off the boat in copenhagen and tattooing so it's and then seeing from that going from there to to where it is now it's like I'm very happy that I got like just a smith of taste from from the old school right, into right. this like new weird age. Where did you get the like, full taste? Did you get all the violence and criminal activity? Oh, oh yeah, you yeah, did? yeah. Was yeah. it was it was there a lot of um, uh, I don't know hazing and then like fucking with you type stuff when you started tattooing? Yeah, it was tough. Like I mean, um, tough in the sense that um, it 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 was good. Like right. you know. Um, it's like bulletproof wrist when the, the owner came into the studio. It was like bikes parked in front, like different gangs and all that shit. Um, mm. So you were like skinny little, like long hair, blonde boy coming fresh off north of Denmark into to the big city of Copenhagen. And it was kind of like, it was very intimidating, but also it was pretty cool at that time, I think. Yeah. Um, it definitely, how do you say, humbled you in a, in a way that I, I'm very happy to have experienced that whole, that whole part of it because it's going away now. Like you see less and less of it, which is probably good for the whole industry and for people in general not to mm -hmm. like work in fear. But I think it was a good good element to to my 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 upbringing and tattooing. I agree. I had the same same story. Different people, different characters, but yeah, lots of that type of stuff going on. And I mean, at the time when I was going through it, I look back on it like it was a, it was a night it was a filter. Like you had to really want. To be oh, a yeah. tattooer oh, to yeah, show man. up to work every day because I didn't want to be around these people. Sometimes I was no, scared. They're like, fucking scary, man. Yeah, like, really scary people. And <laughs> but that was like they they kind of had everything back. It, it, especially in Denmark, because it's such a small country. Like they were the they were the the backbone of the industry. All the studios and mm -hmm. like every, all the areas was like divided into like, hey, you can't open over here on this. Like it's through us and stuff. Like so, it, yeah. it's very much control. Whereas to now, it's just you. You free just, for all. Yeah, you can just rent a room somewhere and like open up a studio, which is super cool. Like more people get tattoos now than than ever, I think, and that's that, that should be like the baseline of. But what's really cool, I think, what you're saying, and I agree, is now that it's over, and it's been many years now. <clears throat> I'm really stoked that I got got to taste that, like mm -hmm. the full history of tattoo. I feel like I was involved in the true history of American tattooing from yeah. those types of shops up till. The new school movement up till whatever people are all doing today you know and that's different categories and seeing the growth in tattooing in those those years is it's mind-boggling dude it's how good people have gotten and are still getting it's yeah it's, it's mind-boggling it hasn't even slowed down it's i am stoked to announce that solon clothing is now a sponsor of the show i've known ryan and jeremy for 20 plus years amazing human beings huge supporters of the tattoo community if you're a tattoo artist and you want to do a, a t-shirt design with sullen you can send that over to design at sullenclothing.com and they would love to see what you've got uh, again thank you sullen for your support thank you ryan thank you jeremy and now back to the show i think we went for like from like four or five categories of styles so I don't know even how many there is now. It's probably like fucking hundreds yeah. of different genres and ways to do it and everything. So yeah. it's it's been like a huge explosion in it. How was your tattooing when you first? I mean, obviously you said you were at a biker shop. Was it just walk in traffic and then, you know? Uh, so I started like I started uh, I started tattooing from home when I was sixteen. Like oh. I got my first kit, uh, like you know those fuck, the the suitcases, the super right. bad ones. Was it the Huck Spalding kit? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It was. I had like a dragon machine and some other coil um, and a bunch of like the little, very scary 
pigments um, <laughs> and you know the whole thing and i just yeah i bought it at a bar um because in denmark you can go to bars when you're 16. Uh -huh. so i got it there and the same night at a house party i just i just started tattooing I <laughs> that a, same night that same night yeah <laughs> first, didn't, didn't bother with practicing on an orange or anything <laughs> no no i got my first one when i was 14 so i and then the second one when i was 16. so i kind of had like an idea about it and i was obviously i was very into it so i watched you know all the youtube videos which was like two or something right. at that time <laughs> and then uh, yeah i just 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 went for it I, I haven't stopped since wow yeah i did some horrible shit like that night but you know <laughs> it was yeah we're still friends so it's good yeah, yeah. it's a good memory for yeah. them and you <laughs> yeah we did a uh one of my good friends christian we did a we have this beer in Denmark called chupo it's really good um but we did that little logo of it on his butt cheek obviously <laughs> and then a few years later we were like all right yeah cool let's cover it up um so we did like this big ass dollar sign on his butt cheek. I don't know why we did it, but we had we had fun doing it. And the old tattoo is still sticking out from it, so it's not like didn't even cover it up. No, 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 no. But that dude, like after he got that tattoo, like I think it was like six months later, he inherited like millions from some rich uncle or something that passed away. So it's like, oh, okay, cool manifestation or some shit. Yeah, yeah was, premonition. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That is cool. Except he got a fucking huge dollar sign on his butt cheek now. Oh well, no. Well. It's somewhere where he, he can keep that private if he wants. No, not really. It's that big. <laughs> it's that big. Yeah. <laughs> it comes out through the pants, down out of the shorts. Oh yeah, my it's God. the whole butt cheek. Mm. It's okay. He's got a nice little choochie. Well, God bless all of our little friends that allowed us to practice on them back in the day. Yeah. yeah did it was, you, you start in the studio or like how do you go about it? I did. Yeah. I, I tried to be more thoughtful and f formal about it. I mean, I wasn't a kid either. I had already just gotten out of the military. Uh -huh. I did five and a uh, half years in the Coast Guard. So I was probably 23 years old. I had been okay. tattooed yeah. while I was in the military. I, I caught the bug, you know, I, I, I was going to these biker shops and dealing with these tattoo guys. And I, and I kind of, and I had been drawing my whole life, but I was like, I kind of was, it was just a thing in my mind. I'm like, wow, you know, I feel like that people would be stoked to get tattooed by someone like me. Mm. You know, that's drawing things that are different that mm. no one's seen before that aren't just the flash off the wall. So I made a set of flash. I should pull it up for you. I'll bring it to the shop one day. You'll laugh your ass off. What mm. I thought was so wildly creative tattoo, yeah. tattoo ideas. And I went shop to shop and eventually got an, you know, first I got an apprenticeship. The guy get, took $2,000 from me and stole it. I went to his house for the apprenticeship and he acted like he didn't know me. I was like, oh, I just got robbed. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> tattooing. Fuck you. <laughs> yes. Totally a fucking son of a bitch. But then, uh, and then I got my next one, and that guy, uh, he's a biker dude, and he was all right, but then he started saying weird shit like three months in, like, me and you are going to be together for life. You know that, right? Like, we're... We're gonna open it. You're gonna be the open. You're gonna open up all my next locations and all this. You could just tell this like ownership stuff yeah, was happening. Dude, that was a lot back then. Like, it, I, I think to some degree it's still this now, but the people or princess rights, even mm -hmm. though it doesn't really exist, but they're like more aware of it now that oh hey fuck you I don't need you, right. which is probably good because you know more studios are popping up and more people are getting tattoo. But back then it was like it's like joining a gang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the tattoo shop, but owned by a gang. Right. Yeah, yeah. Totally. There was, there was and leaving meant... <laughs> no, no, no. They no. were going to... Like, when I left that dude's place, I shit you not, I took my shit in the middle of the night. Because I was, this dude was scary, too. He was a biker, but he was also a scary biker. He was, I think, about 6'6", six, six, 280 pounds, Fuck beard that. to his balls, you know. And uh, I'd never seen him do anything violent, but I heard stories about things he had done. And so I took my shit in the middle of the night. I, he called me the next day and said he, he knew where I was. He was on his way. And when he got there, he was going to cut both my hands off. <laughs> and I believed him. Yeah, of course you did. And I was, wasn't, but it's like, it's that, it's that, it, it's that, um, it's that fear that lives in you when, especially when you're coming up yeah. in it, like, cause you know, all the fucking stories, like, oh, they got smashed your like hands with hammers. And like, if you don't pay, like they'll come for you. Mm -hmm. And like, you're never going to do it again. Like, you know, it'll be tattooing anywhere in the world if, if you don't do as they say. Mm -hmm. But in my experience, it was just uh, hot air really, even though they were like generally fucking scary people, like really like not good humans in, in that sense, but they never, they never, they never took it to that step. It was always mm -hmm. just that, that constant fear in your head like hey i gotta well you know i yeah. gotta i gotta keep my shit straight here otherwise you know 
I'll, I'll get a manicure or something. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. But I was so believed it so much. I was tattooing in Las Vegas at the time. I moved. I got mm-hmm. my my first wife at that at that time, and I was like, "Fuck this place. I'm not even." I, I moved to Oregon. I left yeah. the state because of it. It's and beautiful up there, right? It was awesome. It was Portland back before Portland. You know, it was just 30 years ago, so it was a, it was still a really cool town. Now it's I don't know, it's different. It's way overpopulated, in my opinion, but still a great town. It's just you go there and it's traffic, and I don't know. But anyway, went up there, got my now that I'm on my third apprenticeship. This is the first guy I ever worked with that really understood sh- equipment. Like yeah. he knew how to make needles, he knew how to build machines, he knew all the proper ways to tattoo. Now he was a pretty wild dude, and there was a lot of shit that went down in that shop. That was equally as scary. My my actually my year of working there ended with him tossing my things literally through the front door into the parking lot like twenty feet in the air because I wouldn't back him up on a weird the shit he would get into. You know, yeah, and I had to back him up, and I was like, I had a wife at home. It's like you're not driving to that scary place to help your boss with those scary people. And I was like, dude, what do you want me to do? I got a wife at home crying. And he was just, in his world, it was like, fuck you. You're either down yeah. for this shop and for me, or get, he took my shit and just threw it in the street. And then I, I took six months off and had some deep thoughts like, I don't know. You know at this point, I'm two years into the game, and I've been you know, chased out of town. I've been through all those things. I'm like, should I? But I wanted to be a tattooer, so I just sent out resumes all over the country. I ended up getting a job in San Diego at Avalon Tattoo, which used to be on Garnett. Uh, mm-hmm. They're not there now. There's Avalon 2 in North Park. Fit Buchanan, Patty Kelly, thank you also to you guys because they get, get, gave me a shot there. And that's where my career really started. I started working with Bill Canales and Juan Puente and Randy Jantz and some people that were coming up in the game. Mm-hmm. And, and it, was a, it was a pro shop, you know, and that's when it finally got better. But those were some crazy years, yeah. And that, and that stuff's gone. And I'm glad it's gone too. You're right. It, I'm glad to have experienced it, that part of history. Mm. But when you see, like, it's not right for people to be treated that way. And, no. and I also think it was stifling the growth of tattooing. And now you see tattooing exploding. Yeah, and yeah. that's really where the commitment should be. What is best for tattooing? Yeah, it's, the baseline has to be like, people get tattooed, nice, that's it. Right. Like, it shouldn't be about all the, the other scary stuff and everything. But it did, like, I think back, back, back in those days, it, there was this notion of, if you don't really, really, really want it, it's not for you. Yeah. Like you have to really fucking want it. They were um, testing you. Yeah, I think, I think the approach now is easier, which is also why we're seeing so much more of it, like different styles and different studios mm-hmm. and different like people getting involved. It's because it's it's more approachable now, and that's it's most likely the, the best thing that ever happened to to touring because yeah. yeah. it is like it's not ours. Like we don't own it. You can't claim mm-hmm. ownership of anything in it. It's like it's the the clients that that gets it. That, yeah. Like we have, those are the reason why we get to do it. That's so true. Never forget that, people. Yeah. We're nothing without those, without the people who who love tattoos. And we're just know? fucking nerds. Yeah, yeah, we're just art nerds. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Who happen to be covered in tattoos and love the art of tattooing? I mean, yeah, tattooing is great. I, I it's for me, it's unique in the way that. I mean, you could get a little into some caveats, but what other art form involves two people creating together at that level? Porn. <laughs> 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 good one that's a good uh, one yeah yeah performance art yes yeah. that would be the only other one i could think of born into two man that's all you need <laughs> of course those two things <laughs> yeah no but that that is what to me what's always been so sweet about it is i just think there's a lot of people out there who are i, I mean i actually think everyone's a creative i think everyone's bored an artist i think human beings by nature are creative things mm. you know some draw some build gardens some build businesses some you know creativity can be poured out into you know it's so often if you can't draw you're not an artist i don't believe that's true and i think a lot of these creative people gravitate towards getting tattooed because it's an opportunity to do art with an artist Mm. they get to collaborate with a a guy who's a professional illustrator and tattooer and they got their ideas and you take their ideas and together maybe there's adjustments and change i mean some of the best ideas i've ever had in a tattoo were given to me by by the client Mm. i mean i i always listen you know a lot of times it's like no that ain't gonna work but sometimes it's like that's a fucking great idea and at that point you're co-collaborating and i I don't know. I just think that's really magical and unique. You don't see it with, you know, painters as much and sculptors. No. It's more of a solo thing with those guys. Yeah, when when painters do, do, does their thing, it's like a, what do you call that? When when it's like an ordered uh, painting. So like if if there's commission. A, yeah, it's like a commission. So the col- collaboration in painting is a commission basically. 
uh, not always obviously but for the most part i think so you have like some painter you think oh this guy's work is amazing i want him to paint this and then he gets the the he goes from there yeah he goes from there i a lot of the times when when i do like my tattoos i really like to get like one word or like two words like small right. stuff like it can be can be the motive or like the placement or like mm. basic flow or something if, if i can just get like those two ingredients that's when then that's, that's when it gets interesting because otherwise i end up repeating myself a lot in mm. what i do so it'll be like skulls it'll be filigrees it'll be like sick flow you know the the usual mm. stuff and that's what most people come in for but i do need that little keyword to, to get me going right kind of like a freestyle battle rap you know like He's your word, but then you go from there. That's the best way. I tell my clients, I'll give me a body part and a theme. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a, a subject matter, and then uh, let me let me just do something, yeah, and yeah. we'll talk, okay? Yeah. And then, yeah, maybe some adjustments after that if necessary. But that is the best way to it do it. It makes it more fun. It right? is. Yeah. And you end up with the best. The, the collector is going to end up with the best art out of the artist if that freedom is is given to some Obviously, degree. yeah, yeah. You, there evolve. is this like, how do you say, the the controlling client. Mm. you know and you, you just because you, you know we have to tattoo them like if someone wants to get work done like i feel obligated to do it like because you know we had like why not and some people are very much like in control you can kind of see it as soon as the, you have a consultation with them you can see it in their eyes like hey i want to be in control here and if if you just straight off straight off tell them like no this has to be my way i have to do it like this and this and this they'll get scared and they'll run off but if you just give them like just give them like the ability to get involved a little bit in the process and mm -hmm. um, that's that's gonna later on get them to trust you and then you'll get like total free range like real free yeah. creativity power over what you're doing on them so yeah, that's there is, true like, there's this like balance how to i wouldn't say manipulate uh, your client but you know it's it's well, earn trust yeah or, yeah you're yeah. you're in the trust and then you can go from there yeah that that's that is true and yeah, that that's a tough one. That, that balance is, is tough. And, you know, I tell people sometimes that want to control. And I think some tattoos maybe need a level. There are some people who want a tattoo and, and, and in their head or in the picture they brought you. It's just what they want. They want it yeah, like yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. And I tell them, that's fine. And there's tattooers out there that will do it exactly what you just asked. It's just I'm not that mm. kind of tattooer mm. you know and to me it's a difference between a tattoo collector and an art collector right a tat sometimes people just want to get a, a tattoo and they want it to be you know this 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 horseshoe because their grandfather that's the horseshoe painting in, in their grandpa's room it needs to be just like that and that's great it's yeah. going to be for their grandpa but then there's other people who want to more collect art on mm. skin like yeah. more like the painter they're like look i don't need it to be too controlling i just want one of your paintings in my skin tissue yeah, yeah and yeah. that's what you do it's what i do and i think that's what i think most of your you know major collectors people who really get tattooed a lot that's what they want some of my best uh, some of my, my favorite projects that i've done has been from clients that came in for a cover-up for example because like they just they had something they weren't happy with then they come in and um, most people like when once they reach a certain point in tattooing in my, in my opinion at least they'll be like yeah i don't want to do cover-ups oh, it's like uh, it's not gonna work out mm. but if you if you do that simple little cover-up like after that if, if they got enough clean skin it's like an investment because doing that little like deed and right. covering helping them out a little bit yeah and it's like it's for me in my experience that's been like that's been like the understanding that has been like oh this is how i actually get people to trust me and give give me like free range in what yeah. i'm doing so yeah. usually i never i always find i it's very very rare i say no to anything if, even if it's lettering if it's a little rose on the butt cheek something like that right I, it's a tattoo I'll, I'll do it yeah i am with you i've never been above that plus i like helping people out yeah you know i have i have compassion for that person and i'm like oh man yeah you, you need that gone let me yeah and let me help like you it's in different studios and everyone was like yeah no that's not, i don't want to do that it's like you do it and then you're like all right cool I, I, he's my client for life now right yeah. and he'll, he'll love you forever for it yeah plus it's fun like it's 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 challenging co yeah cover-ups are like a challenge like right. how, how, how can i figure this out yeah there's always a i'm not always obviously there's really bad stuff out there but there's always like there's always an opportunity there. It's like a puzzle. Yeah, and plus, you know, if it's like let's say it's in the cover up on the on the calf down there, then like oh maybe yeah I need to do your whole fucking leg now. Uh, that's the only way to do it. And they'll be like oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> so you got a leg sleeve all of a sudden, you know. 
What is, um, let me ask you a little bit about this, because I just don't know much about Europe. And, and I mean, I, I follow tattooers in Europe. I see what they're doing over there. There's obviously a lot of talented tattoo artists throughout the world, especially Europe. But is it, what's the scene like where you grew up? Is it, what, is it different, much different than America as far as the tattoo scene? Or is it kind of just the same? You don't notice much difference. So Meme Pages on Instagram has taught me that it's all the same. Mm. like studio culture like the stuff that we experience in Denmark in the studios the jokes the fucking stencil machines like the clients that come in mm -hmm. like how they are like what kind of subjects gets talked about even the jokes it's like oh you're what you told yourself like all you know all those right, like right. those those things we make fun of on meme pages it's uh, for Europe and the US it's it's in my experience it's, it's completely it's the same mm -hmm. so um, the tattoo scene it's been I think one of the oldest, probably the oldest tattoo studio in the world that's still open. It might be closed now, actually, but that's in uh, Newhound in Copenhagen. Oh, no um, shit. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like a hundred. I don't, I don't want to put it. It's fucking old. Uh, uh, but it's, it's. What's it called? Tattoo Ole. How do you spell that? Uh, tattoo and Ole. O-L-E. That's the okay, name. Ole. Yeah. Okay. And that's, a, that's another studio right next to it. So Newhound in Copenhagen is this old harbor. Now mm. it's like very fancy expensive tourist place with like a bunch of really good restaurants and stuff mm -hmm. but going back like if you go back like 50 years it was like a rough neighborhood and mm -hmm. it's like prostitutes junkies and obviously uh, tattoo studios mm -hmm. and those studios from, from back there are still existing that's cool yeah so there's, there's all this like it's, it's like a very historical part my uh, my, my great grandmother eva this old lady here she um, she lived there when she was uh, 17, I think. She ran away from home and she was washing clothes for all the bumps. Um, right next, the building right next to a bar. It's called uh, Hong Kong Bar. Mm -hmm. And in the basement of there, there was this old tattoo called Tattoo Jack. Uh, it's like, I've heard of Tattoo Jack. Yeah, Tattoo yeah. Jack is like an old legend. And she would, uh, Eva, my, my, my great grandmother, she would have this uh, hustle with him where she would get uh, drunk uh, guys into the um, to little basement to get tattooed to, yeah and she would jack would like fake tattoo their name on her thigh and they would pay like i don't know like five krona which was like, the money was different back then obviously it was if, when you hear it now it's like it's nothing but back then it was like a good hustle and it would just wash right off and they would think like oh cool uh, this, this lady got her name and uh, yeah <laughs> it's crazy she, ended up, she ended up getting two names actually tattooed but that was from like uh, boyfriends and husbands and stuff and right. he had them cut off later once he got older like back then they would they wouldn't do laser they would like like shave the skin off so so that's what she oh. did but yeah she had a whole hostel going on back there dang okay that that's that kind of lead i was going to ask you a little bit about that like your you know where does this begin for you why why tattoo artist why artist but i could see you've got some history with being yeah around I, didn't, I didn't know about um, about her like wild time she was amazing like she was like amazing woman like she she really lived a full life but i didn't know about that until i actually started tattooing because we didn't we didn't really get into it and she didn't want to tell me all those like good stories back then because right. i was still a kid at, like at that time but um that's crazy dude yeah my dad had tattoos like on his uh on his shoulders like from when he was young and living in the uk um but besides from that, I haven't, I haven't had a lot of exposure to it. I just, I was just, I always been drawing, um, and at some point it was just, it just made sense. I got my first when I was fourteen. I, I lived in Spain at the time with my dad, and we went into a studio on a Sunday. Uh, we, we, me and my cousin, we've been selling all our cool stuff at a flea market, and we had like, I think it was like ninety euros in like small bills and coins. And I called up this studio on a Sunday in uh, Naja, in um, like uh, south of Spain. And it was like, hey, bad Spanish, like, hey, we got like, we got a bunch of money here. We want to get like two small tattoos. And this dude was like, you know, it's like, it's many years ago. So he was, you know, of that age, he had like a fucking uh, lizard Liguan walking around in the studio and like he was high as a kite and he came in. And <laughs> this is did, your first tattoo? Yeah. And he just sued, he saw two 14 year old kids and he was like, all right, fuck this. And he just, we, we paid him the, like all the little coins and bills and everything. And he was like, fuck you guys. But he, he was already in the studio. Plus we were minors. So I like, what the fuck was he going to do? Of course he has to do it. Right. Because we're going to tell on him probably. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, we got this. Um, I got it right here under, it says primos. It means cousins in Spanish. Okay. Yeah, so we both got that. And after that, it was just, 
I was just hooked, man. That yeah, was the hook. I got I got the next one back here and um at my uncle's uh, biker club in Copenhagen. Um, so I got, I, yeah, at, I was 15. Damn, dude, 14 years old. That is so crazy. I have a thir- almost 13-year-old at the house, and I'm thinking of that, my kid, and I'm like, that's like a, that's like a, a child. I mean, that is... Yeah, a- I wouldn't do it myself, obviously. <laughs> no. Obviously. Yeah. But that's crazy. You got your first tattoo at 14. Yeah, at a studio, like, by a, sp- supposed to be professional. <laughs> That's why, like, with my kid, Boris, he's done a bunch of me already. I think he's done, like, eight or nine tattoos on, on friends and my, some of my clients and family and stuff. And, like... And he's seven. Yeah, he's seven now. Oh, and, know. Like, you know, it's, it's, he's, he gets it somehow, right. like, to a certain degree. You think you want to be a tattooer like his dad? We'll see. If not, fuck it. Like, as long as he's happy, you know? Right, right. But, but, but you know, thinking about myself, it's like, all right, cool. Like, how old does he have to be before he can get one? I'm like... Probably eighteen. Was, and I think like fuck no, fourteen. Sorry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get mad at that. I would get mad at the tattooer that would be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Well, it had to be by you. It had to be from dad. <laughs> it would be cooler if it wasn't. Like yeah, I know. Like just like more. There's like, some legal issues in there though. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's cool. <laughs> That's cool, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, you got you got in the game early. I like that story about your grandma and about your first tattoo at fourteen. Yeah. It was yeah. I don't know, we didn't see it that way in, in back then. Like we yeah. were kind of like rebel rebel kids and running around. So it was more like it wasn't like like whoa. It was my yeah, sure. Like that your that friends was, were probably doing it too. Yeah. I I lived in Spain at the time and was hanging out with my cousin who's like a bad apple. Um and we were just yeah it, it did it wasn't like an extra thing it was just more like yeah let's go do it all right yeah right. it wasn't like a big rebel against anything it was more like a just something we did yeah yeah, yeah. we it was a, yeah it, we had one i had one friend in high school who had a tattoo he got it when he was like 16 i think and that that was the only kid anyone had ever seen with a tattoo in my when, when i this is also way back 38 years ago now we're talking yeah. so tattooing had not even come out of the out of the whatever phase that is it was straight up bikers and sailors and nobody else got tattooed that Mm -hmm. i knew of but he did he did and he was a badass he was a legend at the school because eric had that tattoo that's probably when it started for me too because i remember thinking one day i'm gonna be a badass like eric (laughs) Eric. (laughs) thanks a lot eric well yeah actually thanks a lot eric what do you think about i don't know so here we are Modern tattooing is alive and well. What do you what do you think the future holds for tattooing? In, in you know, just more of the same, or do you see changes happening in our industry, or any of that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I hope I don't know. Yeah, like it's more fun if you don't. Um, I think looking ten years back, maybe like right around with the the new AIDS rotaries came out because there's always been rotaries machine, mm-hmm. but like the, the Cheyenne and stuff like that. Right. So, um, what was it called? Ink machines from Sweden. Like those, those, when, those are the first one I remember. I think after that, it was, it became, there was like, all right, something's happening now. Then you get the cartridge system. It's like, all right, this is, uh, we're eliminating and daughter steps like the autoclave and mm-hmm. making the needles and all that and packing. Like there's so much time spent just on that. So, and they got rid of all the cartridge or they brought on the cartridges. You're right. There was, I, I was the same boat. Like we, a day a week was making needles. Yeah. yeah, yeah just the whole day work. making yeah. needles. That's gone. You know, setting up your station with five machines. Yeah. Now you get, it's so much quicker. Yeah. Switching back. I mean, yeah, the equipment. And you're you're working full rotary with cartridges, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I only go with that now. I got, you know, I got so much shit. I, I made everyone at the shop a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago, go to cartridges. And boy, they were pissed. Or a lot of them were pissed. You can't do a good tattoo with these things. You can't. And I'm like, yeah, you can yeah it's just, just they work great just try them and now of course nobody i don't know i guess some people don't but almost everybody does now yeah there was this old tour in denmark uh, uh nils Heyman, he was called he's, he's still alive um he said something one time where it's like so as long as the needle goes in and out you'll be fine yeah. <laughs> like, and i was like all right cool yeah because there's so much there's so much stigma around the oh it has to be the the, the springs and the hammer and like the rubber band should be rubber band or paper towel like how much do you bend each needle it's like there's so much nerdy stuff that goes into it like the coils everything's like all oh, the electricity is not good in this building it's like mm, yeah but you know it goes in and out still um 
all that stuff, like all those steps and they were all like everything that went with that whole setup back then it's just been gone now. Maybe that's why it's been like a big swift in the how do you say the artistic part of the industry mm -hmm. has because we got like let's say three hours more of the day we didn't have to spend on setting up the machines cleaning the the tubes and everything and doing that whole process so now you have you still have the same opening hours but you do just have more time to so, draw and create yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's it's um, you know i think a big shift that we've seen i i think a big reason we're seeing better and better illustrations is because the ipad Oh, dude, yeah, so much. That, that's a game changer. It's safe. Even it's, my own art, like it's saving so much time. So much time. Yeah, you, you like before we like you would have like this big ass light table in the back of the studio, all these prints and like you draw on the back, especially because I was doing realism at, at the time as well, and like you have to like layers and layers and layers of paper everywhere. It's, it takes so much time, yeah. and if you have to do like the smallest change, or I have to move the face a little bit because it's off. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah, of course. I'm. I'm That'll not, take I'm not, two or three hours. Yeah, I'm not just gonna put it on and tattoo it. You know, I, right. sometimes you know I would. Um, now you you don't have to you don't have to do that anymore because you just it takes takes like a couple of seconds then you print it out. So the whole there's so much more time now to make tattoos simply to make tattoos, not setting up, yep. not drawing, not not spending time on stencils and stuff like that. So we have we have the, our time frame for making a really cool piece. It's much bigger. I think that's that's one of the reasons that you see like this explosion in the quality of of artwork that comes out. Totally. Yeah. So that, that coupled with the fact we have Instagram, which Instagram to me was it's insane. It's insane. Well, because you know when I was a young tattooer, we would get in the car and drive up the coast of California, stop in tattoo shops, not tell them we were tattoo artists. Yeah, goes by on them because they kick you out, <laughs> and then just be like, and they wouldn't even you know the portfolios would be behind the counter. Yeah, all the inks would be turned. Yeah, so they could so see you, what brand. Right. <laughs> And you invent, you know, sometimes they'd let you look at a portfolio and then you were just basically trying to memorize shit. Like, yeah. oh, look at the way he did those finger waves. Oh, look at the way. And then you left and ran to our car and like try to sketch what we remember. That's yeah. how you advanced your craft as an illustrator. Now you open your phone, you flip through the first 50 pictures you open is the best 50 tattoos that were done yesterday. Yeah. And yeah. you leapfrog from there, which isn't a bad thing. I'm not talking about copying other work. It's just when an art form goes to an edge and you can see that edge. Yeah. You can then start from that edge yeah. and go the next yeah. step. For, so the acceleration and quality is just on a nuclear trajectory. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's and that, fun. It's it is fun, and it you know it does not scare me. I mean, I am thirty years in, and I'm not too worried about you know my career. I I think I'll be fine, but I I do like when I was young. The the reason I was so booked out with clients and some of my peers. It's because we could draw shit cooler than the next guy. Yeah, and I've we seen just the from down in PB, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I can, I, I'm, I'm almost coming every time I go in there. It's like, wow, so much cool stuff. Well, but that's like, being taken away, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that that whole. I think a lot of it is the the like, because we would sit, we would sit in the studio, like nights, long nights, and we would just we would just we had to draw, you know. So we would sit together and we would just draw a lot, like. Mm -hmm. So that that now it's more I guess now it's more like yeah I'll draw a bit when I get home I'll draw on my couch. There's and when I draw I'm gonna have forty rad tattoos that I'll reference and look at yeah. and, and get inspiration from. Yeah, you hang them up all over. Yep, yeah, as you're drawn. So I and that's not even to get into like this whole AI thing which I've been playing around with that a bit and that it, you know I'm not gonna say scared it is what it is these things are coming whether we like it or not. But I mean, I put a sketch, this new app I got, I, I threw some of my sketches in there and it just it just spits back out completely f formulated art. Really? If, oh yeah, I gotta show you this thing, dude. It's Fuck crazy. Yeah. I love to see that. And none of them, you should see it actually. The one I threw in there was filigree and what it did was really interesting. Like I would never use that, but I might use parts of it or I might allow it to inspire me yeah. and change my art. And I think we're gonna see... I think we, they're already doing it, but I think that's gonna. I think that's the future. I think most illustrators and illustrators meeting tattooers are going to be using AI to help inspire and get novel types of reference mm -hmm. that otherwise wouldn't exist. Yeah. Like this generator basically spit out four or five ideas I'd never thought of. Yeah. I, th I threw it some filigree. And you know, one of them, it's like a woman's face, but then their hair turned you into put a, you, you give it a drawing, or yeah, a sketch? I just gave it a sketch, and then it just reads that. Well, then you pick some things like, oh, I want this generate something that's anime, and it'll do anime something, uh, something landscape, landscape, and then you can add these different buttons, and then the, what it spits out is 
based on that. But off one sketch, you could sit there and keep changing the combinations. You can sit there and get one, and it takes like each one takes like ten seconds. So boom, boom, boom. You're just getting fed these new novel ideas, and then you know most of it's like, oh, nah, nah, nah. Oh, what the. That's cool. Whoa, mm -hmm. look at the way the filigree became like one. It became like a hair, became a mask that covered one of her eyes. And then behind her ear on the other side, the filigree flew out. I, I, there wasn't even a face that I put in the sketch. And right away, I'm like, huh. I mean, I'm not going to use that, but that's a really cool idea for my next drawing. Fuck yeah. So, I mean, I, and now it's just me, the old man, playing with it. Now, you've got 21 year olds, 22 year olds, yeah, 23 year olds. They're smart as well, man. They grow up, they're growing up on it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not, I'm, I'm just, they're already in there playing with these tools, and the tools are getting better by the month. Yeah. It's not by the week. I mean, by the year. It's by the month. It's just every month a new app comes out that's better, that's better and faster and cleaner. It's, I don't know how, what to make of that, but I do find it worth discussing. Do you think, uh, like, like compare if you compare it to the access to information that's available twenty four seven like everywhere, like if you want to, let's say if you want to if you want to really study something, no, I'm not talking about drawing or tattooing, but it's right there in front of you. All mm -hmm. you have to do is like close the porn off your phone and go to YouTube and find like whatever you want to learn. Mm -hmm. So it's everything is available for you right there. Do you think it's going to be the same with all this access to new ideas and in, in tattooing and illustrating? Like that, it's right there, but we still don't. We, it's just going to be like, oh yeah, whatever. Like no, that we not that we don't use it in the same way. Mm, I think there's going to be certain artists that are going to use it. I think what you're going to find is this, the 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 great tattooers in five years are going to be one already extremely good tattooers and illustrators, mm. and then they're going to add the AI in with that, which is going to give them like a a supercharger. Basically, mm. it's going to take what they already were super talented. They were already ultra creative. They already had a great eye for composition and color and weight, line weight and all these things. The only thing that not that they're missing, but the one thing that could be added to that to make them even better is new novel ideas. I mean, you're a creator, you're a creative person, but I mean, there's a limit to how many novel ideas you can mm. spit out in a day, right? Yeah, yeah. You'd be lucky if you sat down and said, I'm going to sit here for three hours and try to come up with a new way of drawing my stuff that's different than anything I've done before. You could do that. Mm. And it would probably take you a few hours. It might even take you a couple of days of tinkering and tinkering. Six months. There might be six months. <laughs> yeah. Or you could throw this generator, a bunch of your, your artwork, and, and just sit there and click as it spits out different idea after idea and then just get inspiration. Mm. And I, I think the future is going to be some kind of fusion with, and not just tattooers, but all creators, writers, uh, designers, architects, all of us. I think it, the ones that are going to win at the highest levels are, are going to be, and I, I'm talking in generalizations, there's always going to be exceptions. There's always going to be room for the super rad, famous, traditional Americana guy yes. who will never fucking touch that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want him to because he is drawing things based on analog techniques that's what you there's going to be those guys right yeah. i'm just talking about i think the masses um uh, that's the type of artists we're going to see that are going to be leading the forefront they're going to not shy away from machine learning and machine um intelligence and they're going to use it as something to accelerate their own process mm -hmm. um so I, i i think that's coming and what that means ultimately i don't know because then then you've got you know i've had a few tattooers tell me nobody's going to want that and i'm always like you're I couldn't. I couldn't disagree more. The the collectors, in the end, honestly, I don't think most of them care how you got to the drawing you're, you no, text no, to them. No, no. They just look at that drawing, and if it's dope, it's dope. Yeah. And if you told them, oh, I was inspired by some AI stuff. Oh, I'm not getting that tattoo. They're yeah. not going to say it. They're not going to care. Spit not to mention the you, the tattooer, probably aren't even going to mention that. And even if you were to mention that, most tattooers wouldn't. All they know is you drew something, you created something, they love it. Yeah. So the idea that collectors are going to shy away from anyone using any of this technology, I think, is bullshit. I think most people won't give a shit. As long as it looks rad, they're going to want it. And that, I think, is I where mean, I don't know what that means exactly. I, th I still think you have the struggles of large format composition. Mm -hmm. The AI doesn't so much figure that out yet. Mm -hmm. um, but... The ability to draw really novel, cool shit, I do think, is becoming less of a necessary ingredient to some degree. And then it comes down to, well, you still have to technically tattoo. True. You still have to know how to put ink and skin efficiently, effectively. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, I think that's a pretty teachable skill for most people that pay attention. Yeah, probably just this, the, the ladder has become shorter from, like, to, to graduate into, like, bigger, like, like going from... Let's say mediocre understanding of 
like as you say like body compositions and and things like that and then you get this tool so like the steps that you have to take to get over there it's it's probably much quicker and shorter yeah it's a, it's a shorter route yeah, it probably. took you eight years to figure out the young tattooer of today will probably have it pretty figured out in a year yeah or less maybe but there might still be an element of actually i think a lot of it comes from the experience of like i'm still talking about composition is it comes from drawing freehand on bodies feeling like bones feeling the muscles like how are true if, you have those you have to understand how everything moves yeah and like you have the high points you have low points like that basic knowledge that yeah for, that i use in my work I'm not sure everyone does it but that's i that comes from experience um yeah. so i think the combination of experience and these new right fucking amazing tools that co that combination is gonna really kick ass at, at some point yeah i agree i have to get into it now like, I want to see the app or whatever it is. You're well, you about. know, I, I'm going to. So we have this bodysuit show coming up November. Yeah, yeah. Everybody listening, we are doing. I've done two installments of it. It's called Commitment. So we did Commitment 1, then we did Commitment 2. This is Commitment 3. All the tattooers at Guru and a bunch of our friends have been invited. A bunch of really badass tattooers um, are doing these full-size bodysuit type paintings for the show. November 11th, this year, 2023. Put it in your calendar. But... um. In my piece, I'm gonna play around with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my entire piece on my iPad digitally. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna not use anything that the AI generator spits out, but you know, vibe from it maybe some mm -hmm. of the elements mm -hmm. it spits out. Use it as a novel idea generator, basically. Like, huh, never thought to add that. Never thought I would make the sky behind the girl quite look quite like that. That's a little, you know, and, and, and I'm gonna lean on. I wanna I wanna play with it. I mm -hmm. wanna just see what comes out of me with me allowing that stuff to come into my work mm -hmm. and i'm sure it'll probably tick a few people off but fuck it i don't care i'm just having fun you know whatever let's give it a shot yeah there's probably a lot of resistance to it as well like, i mean i think it's fear i got friends that work at adobe i got a really high up executive friend at adobe he, he is the lead creative director at adobe he's got hundreds of designers that work for him and he told me they are they're stressed out because what would have taken maybe 25 designers working on a video game with ai these new ai tools they think they can do it with like two yeah so you have two very talented designers that are curating whatever the ai is generating and manipulating it and changing it but you don't need 25 of them anymore mm -hmm. so there's you know creatives writers and illustrators and designers i i again i'm not too i just think it you'd be a fool not to be a little concerned what's that happened in the last 10 years like, the next 10 are going to be crazy. Yeah, it's probably going to get more more wild. More wild for sure. Well, you know, you mentioned travel. And one of the things I wanted you to kind of talk about, which I think is super cool that you do, is you host, you put it in your words, the Costa Rica situation. Tell, oh. us, tell everybody what you're doing down there. Uh, it's called the remote tour. And basically, it's, it's, for me, it's very hard to explain since it's, a, it's an experience, individual experience of all the artists that attend. Everyone kind of has a different take on what they think it is mm -hmm. um how i see it it's more um, we have a we have a beautiful location like beautiful uh, a, a, a friend's resort that that, that kind of helps us out with it mm -hmm. um we have like 10 to 12 rooms there and we just bring in a bunch of tattoos clients creatives mm -hmm. and we stay there for like 10 days sometimes 14 days sometimes i think the longest one we did was 24 days um we have all the equipment that you need for tattooing painting sculpting whatever you want to do there it's like That's we'll cool. we'll provide the creative space and we will provide the tools and you just you come there and stuff happens uh you you, you definitely you, you leave with a new idea new knowledge uh, new friends new network um it's yeah it's 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 just, it's hard for me to explain it, mm -hmm. like, even though... Uh, we, we, I when, does it, when do you do it every year? Is it the same dates? No, it's kind of fluent. Um, we've been testing out different like seasons because uh, we don't want to do it in the high season mm -hmm. uh, in Costa Rica because it like, it's way too hot. Mm -hmm. um, right. This time we did it. We had two tours this year so far. It was in uh, May and June, mm -hmm. uh, 10 days each, and that worked out really good. Mm -hmm. uh, we even had some guys from, uh, from Guru here uh, joining. I think Bell was there and... Uh, Drew, I think those were the only two from. Bill, the, you said Bill was there. Yeah, Bill Can, was there as well. Canales. Yeah, he, he works here. No, Bill Canales at Full Circle. You're talking about. Oh, has he moved? No, Bill didn't never worked here. Bill owns Full no, Circle. No, Bill. Who? Oh, Bell. 
Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying Bill. My bad. Yeah, my yeah, bad. Yeah, my pronouncement. I was like, oh, I would have, because Bill, Bill's a friend of mine. I'm like, I didn't know he went down there. Yeah, she, she was there. So That's we had, cool. Yeah, Andrew's been there. Like, Drew's been there a couple of times yep. as well. And um, everyone kind of gets a different experience there. So uh, I would say if you're a tour or artist or creative or something, and you need, like, or you feel like you want to, like, you want to experience a new way of meeting people that's not through a tattoo convention over three days and fucking uh, hunt like 10,000 people going through your booths and like it's this high stress level of when you actually get out and meet your coworkers from around the world, this remote tour is a really good um, like alternative to, to actually get to know people yeah. that like are in the same boat as you are. Like who's like really into tattooing or, or painting or drawing or in a more intimate setting and there's food there being made yeah, and there's is. drinks and there's activities to go do if you do, on the day off you take and yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's an awesome idea dude I, it's, yeah. I can't believe I haven't gone yet maybe I'll next one please yeah, man, keep me in the loop I want to come down there and check out maybe bring the show down there and interview a few people while we're down there you know yeah fuck yeah you can do it. that's the thing like whatever you have to what so it's it's like an open concept the remote tour is an open concept whatever you when you're attending whatever you want to bring to it everyone is free to bring whatever they want to do there if you yep. want to do a podcast there or if you want to film a drama series as long as everyone's there is cool with it and it doesn't you know it's not right. like a burden everything is possible so it's like a it's a, it's I say it's really an open space for people to come and create. That's cool. It's but that, but the focus is mostly tattooing. A lot yeah, of tattooing well, going on. Me and Amalia, my partner in it, uh, we both the tours. We we always have been. So right. that's that's just been the the baseline of it. Right. But everyone is, as I said, everyone who's really good at what they do and or are creative and like or clients or whatever. Like if if you have a good vibe, you can come and you can hang out and do these things. How fun for you guys out there that are collectors! I know a lot of my my yeah. clientele. I've told a few people about this, and they they were like, "What? Yeah, it's you know fun. the idea to fly to Costa Rica, maybe spend a few days at the beach, get two days of work on your body suit or your back piece, hang around for another few days, and then come home. It it's that's 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 fun, dude. That's really cool. It is a yeah, it's it's a very special thing. Um, it's hard for me to describe it. I, I tried like multiple times to like sit down and write, like, "Hey, okay, what?" what what is this thing actually but i always end up with the same conclusion that it's not for me to tell what it is yeah you have to experience it come check it out yeah just That's come rad. check it out we're gonna do other locations around the, around the world as well like graduate from costa rica that's mm -hmm. been our like building point to get the whole concept and everything kind of like in in tune next one we're gonna do it's gonna be a smaller version of it but we're gonna do we're gonna fly to iceland in uh, july end of july uh, next year and then we're gonna few artists uh, and the whole team and we're gonna set up these uh, remote platforms around in iceland and tattoo like in nature like wow. so it's yeah it's we, we, we kind of testing out a new concept like That's how cool how to experience traveling with your friends like with your co-workers with your clients going to weird spots getting whatever kind of work you want to get done you can get it there and it's yeah it's, it's, it's just we were, we we're having a lot of fun with it, and that's that's the most like that's the baseline for us to get to do it is because we get to travel and hang out with our friends. That's fucking cool, dude. Yeah, and I've always wanted to go to Iceland. Never been. It's Here it's a, beautiful. It's so beautiful there. Everyone loves it. Yeah, yeah. It's super expensive and everything, but it's like it's it's really worth it. Like that's that's a trip like people should save up for. All right. Yeah. Duly noted. You would know. Obviously, you've been, and I mean Denmark's not far from Iceland, right? No, but Denmark's completely different. Like yeah. uh, nature-wise, Denmark is flat, snow. We got some, a few hills. That's it. Beautiful forests and stuff, and mm -hmm. like nice coastlines, but nothing compared to Iceland. What was your main motivation for leaving Denmark and coming to the United States? Restlessness. You just like to travel, get yeah. out, dude. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I kind of, I have to, I have to, I have to keep moving somehow. Like <laughs> getting older and kind of realizing that it's like I've been struggling with it for like years. Um, also with like my relationships with uh, family and friends and lovers and whatever it's like all right cool uh, it's like time to shake it up yeah I, I can't there's no way around it i can't like be in denial like i have to i have to be on the move somehow in mm. some sense i have to always have something going on at least for now in this period of my life otherwise i, I just lose my mind there's a lot of books i've read i've read about they talk about creativity and how much travel yeah. accelerates creativity like yeah. it's one of the biggest not putting yourself in novel environments mm. you know because if you're in your same environment day by day your same house your same this your same commute your same it, it creates these grooves in your mind that 
sort of atrophy that creative part of yourself. But when you throw yourself to Japan and you're trying to find a train to get to this place and you don't know what the fuck is going on and you've got to figure it out. It's so cool. I it, love your, it. Your brain just starts firing. And next thing you know, you're drawing new and interesting stuff. Plus, plus what you see when you travel. You, yeah. You see new architecture. You see new paintings. You see all that. And you, it all assimilates. So it makes sense. as a, The friends as a, you meet as well. Like we, We're pretty lucky when it comes to traveling when, while you're doing tattoos as well. Because you got friends all over, mm-hmm. like everywhere. If I go to Taiwan or Japan or Hong Kong, whatever it is, mm-hmm. I always know someone there. And if I don't know someone there, I'll just text the studio and they'll be like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, let's go get some food and right. hang out." And you want to work here? Like, it's so easy now to the to, re- to reach there. out to because that's that's going back to like if the the European tattoo scene and the American one is the same. It's it's also the same in Asia and like in in other continents. Mm-hmm. It's it's how do you say we're all in the same boat we just like to draw and tattoo and if someone comes over it's like of course like you're you have an instant connection already the traveling tattoo scene is a whole new market like even here at guru like we used to 15 years ago someone would come and guest two three people a year yeah. now we're having i think last month we had 10 different guests here oh really yeah Shit, that's so much They're, you don't see them as much because you're over in the pacific beach location yeah. they tend to be here more just because we have the space but and just getting more and more every year. And yeah. I think, again, back to Instagram. I mean, we're all so con- easily connected now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if I had to go to Singapore, I I would know a couple tattooers that I respect there. I would simply go to their Instagram and I'd just be, DM them. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to be in Singapore. Yeah, I'd love to come meet you. And maybe I'll see you. Boom, I got a guest spot in Singapore that quick. You yeah. know, it would have been so hard to pull that off 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. especially with the... I'm, Probably yeah. If you, yeah, if you just went into the studio and like, oh hey guys, like I got my backpack and all my equipment, you'd be like, yeah, fuck off. Yeah, it yeah. would not fly. <clears throat> yeah, you want to steal my stuff? Whatever. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> totally different. Yeah, I'm not sharing my clients with you. No, no, that's cool, dude. Well, well, that's good, man. I mean, uh, what about future goals? I mean, I know we covered this Iceland thing. Is there in in the big picture? Do you have any? future goals like where you want to see your tattooing or your life or more of these or anything you want to speak about before we close this up i think uh, i think what i want to see it's it's like how do you say because tattooing is i've been doing it for so long i'm always going to tattoo but i want to i want to be able to bring it to more people not just the tattooing part but that whole traveling creative environment uh helping people out who's like stuck in some place I'm uh, hoping to, 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 the the remote tour project is like a catalysator into like mm-hmm. getting more people to realize that you know there's there's a lot more to you than just sitting in a studio, drawing, uh, mm-hmm. dealing with clients, and like living in this little bubble. Sometimes, like if if you're good at what you do, and like there's there's a there's a way to like expand your whole horizon and to really be free mm-hmm. based on sitting and drawing funny drawings. Yeah, it's a this this there's a big leap if you're if you're willing to do it. That's cool. Well, I'm excited to see what you come up with next. This Iceland thing sounds amazing. Um, and again, it's an honor to work with you here, Guru. I'm stoked you and Kenny came down and you're with us now. It's rad to see you guys do what you do, man. Appreciate you very much. So. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks for having us. And uh, looking forward to see some more. I mean, you've got some body. I'm sure more body suits. You've got more in you. They're on their way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Well, That's it for today, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Stay tuned for our next one. I'd like to tell you who it is, but I never know. But it'll be something rad. Thanks for checking it out. Peace out. (laughs) Cool, dude.